Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to do a video about a stock that I love. This has been one of my favourite stocks to own. And even though it's about this stock and I'm updating you guys about this stock, I don't want it just to be a video about that. What I want it to be a video about is that even if you don't own it, you take away what I do after I've had a winner. So this is a stock that's done very well for me and I've owned it, you know, when I buy a stock, I own it for at least five years. I'll try own it for five years. I always go five years because after five years, it could get very blurry about what the future is, what the competition like, where's the business going, what's the game plan, what's the profit margins, what's the revenue growth at. I always think anyone that says they invest longer than they're gonna hold it for five years isn't telling the truth because so much can change in, the, in an industry in five years time. So I can hold a stock longer than five years if everything's still going well, but I always feel like I can't tell you if I'll own it longer than five years because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. So many things can change. So when I've got a stock that I've owned now for four years, it's going to be the fifth year next year. And also when I buy a stock, my aim is always to get 100% return on it. When I buy a stock, I want to get 100% return. That's always my aim when I buy a stock. So if I'm buying one, that's what I'm aiming for. Now that I've been in this stock for four, nearly five years that I've said. And now that I'm up 100% my target in that time frame, what's the next steps for this stock? What am I gonna do next? And I think that I've not really ever talked about that on the YouTube channel and I thought this would be a really good video and an example to kind of show you guys that because obviously most of the time I'm talking about stocks is new stocks. You know, I'm always talking about what I'm buying next. You know, I've got a pretty good track record in the stock market. You know, a good eight out of 10 stocks I would say that I talk about turn out to be, you know, very good performing stocks. So people always come to me for ideas and I'm always trying to give you guys the ideas about where I'm looking at, what what I like. But it's, it's very rare that I go back and talk about a past investment and especially a winning uh, past investment. I don't often talk about it. So I thought today was a good one to talk about one of my favorite stocks and an update. And also, after I've been in that stock for a long period of time and I've got that upside, where do I kind of go next? So, hope you enjoyed the video. Quick shout out on the Patreon, I did drop an exclusive video in which was the US portfolio for March 2024. So, if you are on the Patreon, go check that exclusive video out. I'll hopefully do two more this week. If you do want to join the Patreon and see more exclusive videos from me and see how my US portfolio is doing, join through the link in the description. Only £5 a month, price of a pint, nearly, it depends where you go. So if you go to other spoons, you might get two pints for it. But anyway, so the stock that I own, or at the moment that I'm talking about today, is Greg's. Fantastic week today. Uh, stock is up 5%, and it's been a good performer for me. I own this stock for four years now, bought during 2020, during the whole CV situation. And uh, I'm up over 100% on the position, and I've been holding it for, you know, quite a while now. Now, for me, I actually were up 100% during 2022. I held the stock for around about a year and a half, and I actually got 100% return then. And I, I sold half my position out. It was a really good winner. I uh, sold half a position out, and uh, it did drop after that. I probably should have bought back in there again. But during that time frame, if you remember, in 2022, everything was crashing. So. It was a bit like a kid in the candy store. It's easy to look back and go, yeah, maybe I should bought on that date, but you you remember all the stocks that were crashing out during 2022. There was just so many things to buy. So it, hindsight, isn't it? So, But um, it's recovered since then, and the stock's gone back up, and uh, now I'm back up 100%. But 2022, I sold out half just because I feel, felt like the valuation and got to where I, you know, I bought up for 100% return. I got there. Didn't want to sell it all because I thought it was a fantastic business. So I still had... Some shares that I kept because I think financially it'll still do very well. But at the same time, most of the gains that I expected to have is I saw it. So um, I might as well take some profit off the table. And that was a really good decision. And then I've held some stock, uh, half my position since then. And I continue to hold that because it's a, uh, in my opinion, a very good business. And also for some other reasons, which I'll get onto in a little bit. Now, Greg's itself recently just brought out their update and their interim results and they brought these out, I think it was on Monday, the 5th of March, which is yesterday actually. They brought these out yesterday and the results were absolutely amazing. Once again, revenue moving in the right direction, pre-tax profit in the right direction, EPS moving up in the right direction. So the stock is actually getting cheaper, um, which is one of the big things now uh, that I'm, I'm going to talk about. Uh, they also hiked up the dividend. Once again, one of the things that I'll talk about why I still own half my position, even though I did reach that 100% return. And uh, they also announced the special dividend. So once again, um, profit is absolutely amazing. I'll get more as a shareholder. So 
even though the stock went up to 100% and I did take some profit off the table because it did reach my valuation, I still wanted to keep half of my position in Greg's and, and the reasons why. Now, the reason why I kept half of my position in here is because I still thought they were gonna do great results, which as you can see, we've seen great results just recently come out. The other thing is from a dividend point of view. Now, because I have such a good average, I actually get a higher dividend yield. My dividend yield is more towards, especially now because it's also putting special dividends out, I'm actually getting a 5% dividend yield, which is good. You know, I, I know that I'm gonna get that dividend every year. So I'm all, just for holding the stock, I'm getting 5%, which is decent. And when I think about the S&P's return, let's say the average is 9% a year, I only really need to get 4% more share price appreciation from Greg's to really justify holding it. Because if I'm getting the same average return as the S&P 500, it's not bad at all. Now, ideally, I want to get more, because otherwise I might as well just go by the S&P 500. But it gives me that safety net knowing I'm probably going to be quite close to the S&P's 500 performance from just holding Greg's. As well as that, I'm going to have a dividend that's hiked up and the potential of special dividends. But the thing we have with Greg's is it's financially performing very well. So as well as having that dividend yield, I still believe I'm going to get some share price appreciation from it. Now I saw a video the other day, the video I did on Monday or something about mistakes about selling and having amazing averages on businesses and not selling too early. Now when you look at Greg's for example, I don't believe I'll ever get the average I have on Greg's again, which is, I can't even remember exactly what it is, I think maybe around the 15, 15 pound range or something like that. I don't think I'll ever get that average ever on Greg. So there's something that also considers that realistically, if I do sell it, I probably won't ever buy back into those sort of levels. But someone said, if you are not willing to buy, there's no point at the levels it's currently at. There's no point holding the stock. And I, I totally disagree with that. Because if you look at the moment, and this is the power of compound, compounding, especially when you have businesses at really good valuations. Let's say I had, a, for mass reasons, let's just say I have Greg's at a 10 pound stock and the stock goes up to 20 pound. I make a 100% return. Now you might say, well, um, if you don't think it's gonna go to 30 pound and you know go up another 50%, there's no, you know, the, the, or, or 40%, 40, let's say 40 pound, because that'd be a 100% return. If it's not gonna go to another 100%, you know, why don't you sell the business? Well, the thing is, if I have a 10 pound average and it goes to 40 pound, it's not 100% return for me because remember, I'm compounding now. This is the power of compounding. I would only need the stock to go up another 50% and I would get another 100% return because I have a 10 pound average. And that's the power of compounding. It Sometimes with the power of compounding is it can take a while to get your first 100% return. But because when you look at what you need to go up to a 200% return, it comes around quicker. 300, 400, 500. And that's the power of compounding. And that is where you have really successful returns is the power of compounding. And sometimes people forget the power of compounding. So I don't really need share, the share. Obviously, I'm, I'm already sitting on a really good dividend yield. And because of the power of compounding now, I'm actually going to see a, a very easy, I only need a, a slight share price gain to justify me you know, buying this stock. And the other thing as well is that even though the share price hasn't really done much in the last few years, and you might say, well, I sold out half a position and I'm still holding half a position now, uh, and, and the shares haven't done anything for two years, but financially they're doing the right thing. You know, when we go back to the financials, as you can see here, they've all been moving in the right direction, the right direction. So you know what's been happening in the background because the company's still financially smashing it. When you look at a valuation point of view, this was, trading at a bit of a premium. That's why I sold the position in the first place. I think it was you know, towards the highest end of where it was like 30 times earnings. Realistically now, it's around 21 times earnings. And with the financials they're doing, you know, it's normally around 21 times earnings. This is gonna drop below 21 times earnings. So this is gonna be historically below its average. And the thing as well is that this is an average P. Greg's has always, in the last kind of five, 10 years, because it's been growing so well, you know, when you look at these financials, it's actually traded at a premium. This is one of the best UK businesses out there. So this is normally traded at a bit of a premium. So the valuation now, because they've been smashing it, is actually going to drop even lower. And the fact that it's not even trading at a premium, which it normally does, suggests to me that I could even see, even if it doesn't go to back to a premium valuation, the share price is now actually going to go undervalued. So I'm going to make that five, 10 percent a year that I make with a dividend on top and it justifies me holding the business and, and also the power of compounding and the dividend's going to get hiked up. So when I didn't want to, even though I took some profit off the table because I made my 100% return in a year and a half, 
I didn't want to sell out the rest of my position because Greg's is a quality business. I am never going to get av this average again. I have a fantastic business, a business that's going to, I'm getting a really nice dividend, a dividend that's going to get hiked up. I'm getting a business that's absolutely financially performing and it's financially performing that the valuation is going to catch up eventually to that other one where I am going to get that share price return. And because I have a really good average, very high dividend and the power of compounding, why do I want to sell out a fantastic business that's going to compound massively for me in the next few years? And it kind of goes back to the point of view that I talked about on Monday about not selling too early on fantastic businesses. And I can't believe I'm putting Ferrari and Greg's in the same sort of category here, but you know, I talk about Ferrari and I look at Ferrari and it's a stock that I sold too early. It was a fantastic business. I had 100% return and I took it all out. And I look back and go, why did I do that? Like, I realistically, where I bought Ferrari, I'm never going to see those averages again. And it's a fantastic business that would have given me, you know, great share price, great compounding. I think they even pay a little bit of a dividend yielding now. And so again, I look at Greg's and realistically, it's a good brand. You know, I don't know if you put it in the terms of Ferrari, but it's a brand that's not going anywhere in the next five years. People still love going to Greg's. They're still opening more shops. You put a Greg's down somewhere, it's instantly busy. It's the place that everyone goes to for the go to easy coffee access, easy easy tea, cheap, cheap as well, cheap food as well, uh, and, and good food for the price. It's got a fantastic brand. You stick a Greg's down there, tomorrow you'll have a lot of customers in. And it's one of those that I did the right thing, where I took, hey, you know, I took half the profit off the table because it got to where I wanted in five years, in a year and a half. But at the same time, I also didn't sell all my position because I thought, you know, I'm probably never going to see Greg's down at £15 again. And it's going to be a stock that pays me a good dividend yield. It's still going to compound at a very good rate and I'm still going to do very well. And I don't need Greg's to do 100% return in the next five years to justify me holding it because I'm going to get a dividend yield that's hiking up massively and the share, because of the power of compounding, I don't even need that much share price performance from it and it will justify probably beating the S&P 500 for, in, in the next few years. So I'm going to hold it. So, yeah, that, that's, the, that's the, the, just the video overall in Greg's. I wanted to say Greg's still holding it. You know, really good update when you look at the numbers. Uh, I didn't really go too much into the numbers today, to be fair. You know, good growth, good profit, hiking up dividend, special dividend, rewarding the shareholders as well, um, and, and also the workforce, which is really good. Uh, when you see a business uh, doing that, I think everyone's in a good place when they start doing things like that. You know, financially, absolutely smashing it. But I also wanted to talk about, about today a point of view that what I do with a stock that reaches my 100% return a little bit earlier than what I anticipate, but also an example of me, what I do with my winners, then when they get there, do I sell it all? Do I trim the position? Do I want to hold it? The power of compounding and uh, dividends as well. So um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this uh, update on uh, Greg's and uh, a little bit more of not new stock ideas for you guys, but also where I go with winners as well uh, in the longer term. So hope you enjoyed the video guys and I'll see you in a bit. <laughs>